Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw. 8th to the 9th of April 1962. Sufferings made by humans. These two talks were based on the Mahadukakanda Sutta, the greater discourse on the mass of suffering, Sutta number 13, Majima Nikaya, Minnesota 13. Sayadaw told the story in the Sutta, one morning monks went out for alms round. It was too early and they visited a monastery of a group of outsiders nearby. They told the monks as, Gotama, Buddha, taught about the faults of sensual pleasure, material form and feeling, Vedana. Our teacher also taught the same things. So what is the difference between us? But the monks were displeased with what they said and went for arms round. After the arms round they went to see the Buddha and informed their conversation with the outsiders. The Buddha taught him to know about the nature of sensual pleasure, its faults and the way to end them except himself no one in the world could know and teach these things. With the five senses of door, eye, ear, body, and sense objects, form, sound, tangibles, sukha and domanasa vadanas, pleasant and unpleasant feelings, arise. These are arisings, because of the five chords of sensual pleasure, five kamaguna. This leads to gratification, asada. Now, I tell you the faults of them, i.e., adanava, dangers. To enjoy the sensual pleasure you have to work for money in many ways, even in dangerous and harmful ways. If you don't get the money mental sufferings come in. And if you get the money you have to worry about them. There are also many family problems. In this talk Sayadaw also mentioned about the coup of military general N. E. Wynne happened in March 1962 very recently. It was also about the gratifications of sensual pleasure by N. E. Wynne. The coup was followed by a lot of sufferings until to this day. When it will end? These are the Adhanavas of sensual pleasure. There are many more to say about them in human society and everyday life up to international levels. For the contemplation we should read the original Sutta which is excellent. Sayadaw also predicted the future economics of Burma and reminded his disciples to concentrate on the practice. The way to escape, Nisarana, from sensual pleasure is to give up them and follow the noble eightfold path. To contemplate and observe sensual pleasure as anicca, dukkha and anatta. In the second talk Sayadaw mentioned in the beginning a very important point. He said one of the reasons human not understand dukkha, the faults and dangers of sensual pleasure, is traditional belief, idea and custom, for example, that a man must has wife and vice versa. Mahanama the Buddha's cousin asked him why at times the states of greed, hate and delusion invading his mind and remaining there. This incident was in the Kaladukakanda Sutta, Sutta number 14, Majima N. Minnesota 14, the Buddha told him as he was a once returner, Sakadagami, but he did not know how to transcend Loba and Dosa which he still had them. As a once returner he was only reducing of them. The Buddha said, if you become non-returner would not stay at home. You are still attached to the sensual pleasure. If you realize the more higher stages will know the dangers with its faults and displeasure about them. Five chords of sensual pleasure have little pleasure with a lot of dukkha, this point is very important. With a lot of contemplation in daily life of experiences discern the dangers and its heavy burden profoundly. The Buddha taught him how to contemplate on sensual pleasure. He gave the similes. These are not in the Sutta, sensual pleasure was like a burning torch of grass, if a person continued to hold on to it, it would burn his hand. So he had to let it go. It was also like a bone smeared with blood. If a dog continued to bite the blood smeared bone with clinging, it would become tired and never fulfilled its hunger. Contemplate the Kandas as a murderer, Vardaka, for the higher stage, as in Yamaka Sutta, 
SN 22.85. The Buddha taught about the faults of the five cords of sensual pleasure, Kamaguna, the faults of material form and the faults of feeling. We also teach about these things. What are the differences between us? These points were made by the outsiders. We have to know about the true nature of Kamaguna, its faults and dangers and the escape from them. Because of the five cords of sensual pleasure affection comes to be, such as husband to wife, wife to husband, to children, etc. You have to work and feed them whether it's hot or raining. These two sermons were addressed to the couple Yu Chit Sui and Dor Ma Ma. These are the causes of Sukha and Somanasa, happiness and joy. And then faults and dangers follow it behind them. Asada, gratifications, become Adanava, dangers. Sayadaw talked about difficulties in everyday life for living. You can't abandon happiness and joy that encounter with faults and dangers. We have to be very clear about it that these sukha and somanasa are not real happiness, low and ignoble which are like the honey on the tip of a razor blade that most people like it. See the whole mass of sufferings in today's world. There are dukkhas coming for searching of it. When you can't get them follow by mental sufferings. If you get money by searching have to worry and concern for its safety. Before you're tired by searching after attain it become worry for it. We have to contemplate all these kinds of sufferings created by humans as described in the Mahanidana Sutta, DN 15, Mahadukakanda Sutta, Minnesota 13, and other suttas. These dharmas can't be known by Ditti people, outsiders and other faith followers, Saka, king of the 33 gods realm, and Brahmas, Janak gods. Only I, Buddha, and my disciples can know about them. All these sufferings are not having property and having property and not including any real happiness, the happiness of a dog with a dry bone. You can also die by searching for them. Even if you get them, you can end up killed by people who take them from by force, e.g., robbers, by governments, etc. I am not talking about the sufferings that come from the candor yet. Now, these are the sufferings created by oneself, not by God. The dukkha of the candor is the suffering caused by past life stupidity and foolishness. Instead of abandoning these sufferings even you're making prayers, with merits, for them which you worry about for the future not to get it again. Until you abandon the kamaguna, you can never be happy. The sufferings made by yourself are not related to Kama. They arise from the objects of Kamaguna. Were these sufferings caused by N.E. Wynne? Or by Kamaguna? Recently General N.E. Wynne made a coup. N.E. Wynne took power by force, driven by his own Kamaguna. People who suffered from it becoming displeasure, i.e., you news government. So, the Buddha said we don't understand Dukkha. Some Westerners think that they understand about Dukkha, i.e., philosophers. You only attain Nibbana by thoroughly understanding Dukkha. If you never practice, not prepared, and ready for Dukkha, it will continue. You have to contemplate the impermanence, Anaka, of your five Kamaguna. If traditional matters obscure people and Dukkha Saka disappears, human customs cover up Dukkha. Therefore humans have long sufferings. All these customs are made by themselves, and not by wise men. Sayadaw talked about Mahanama, stream enterer and once returner abandon the coarser loba, dosa and moha defilements, but they can't yet abandon the loba related to Kamaguna. These cords of sensual pleasure offer little joy and happiness with more sufferings. Sayadaw provided some examples of the faults and dangers of Kamaguna. Between Diti, views, and Tana, craving, craving is tougher than Diti because of its refinement. As an example, it was like difficult to shave the delicate hairs of a baby. With more Kalesa refinement, 
the path factors must be sharper. If you want to kill Tanner, you have to contemplate to know about its loathsomeness or ugliness. If you see it as beautiful, you will get caught up with it. Continue to talk about the five candors and contemplate them as murderers. If you know them as murderers and will not want to associate with it. The monk Yamaka and Mahanama were taught in this way. The monk Yamaka was taught by Saraputta. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw. The 17th of April 1962. Human's own properties. The compilers of the Mogik talks gave the title as, The Way of the Kanda. This talk is very simple but profound. All the Buddha Dharmas have these qualities. Using them in daily life with contemplation, we can find out the profundities. Unlike any other philosophies and views, these are created by people full of defilements or with defiled minds, which can never solve human problems and sufferings, instead, they increase them. Everyone has four kinds of own property, birth, jati, aging, jara, sickness, vyadi, and death, marana. We already had it before, now still have it, and will have it in the future. All of them are dukkha saka. We must shun these things. Continuing to seek them reflects limitless stupidity. These are all wrong searches. The Buddha himself in the Majjhima Nikaya said, I myself, before I became a Buddha, was with the wrong quest. Wives, children, properties, and jewels are all sought in pursuit of birth, aging, sickness, and death. For example, affection for children is craving, tana, right-pointing arrow clinging, upadana, right-pointing arrow actions, kama, right-pointing arrow jati, jara, etc. Another example is the affection for gemstones, which leads to craving right-pointing arrow, jati, jara, etc. This talk was delivered in Mogik, so many gem businessmen and women were in the auditorium. Searching for money is the same. Have you identified the culprit causing the long samsara? Continuing to search for these things is a wrong search, ignoble, lowly. You already have jati and are searching for jati, already have jara and are searching for jara, etc. Whatever you are doing, check with the DA process to understand these meanings. If you seek Nibbana, you cannot engage in wrong searches. You must discern their faults and dangers. You are not like this, thinking of having all these things are good. You need to listen with Nana ears, or it's not easy to understand. You are busy every day with work, searching for these four factors of Dukkha Saka, i.e., birth, aging, sickness, and death. You already have a sore and haven't cured it yet. It's like looking for another one. Even doing merits without knowing how leads to searching for jati. No need to mention other things. The dukkha you now have is what you searched for before. Now, looking for it again means having it again. What you are doing is not cutting off dukkha but letting it continue. Aging upon aging, sickness upon sickness, and death upon death are all more painful than being struck by a thunderbolt. You will be freed only with the right searching. All these things happen because of having this present candor, only by not wanting it is it possible to be fulfilled. Your knowledge must penetrate the candor. Whatever wrong searching is for this candor. If you want happiness, practice vipassana. Sayadaw taught Chitta Vipassana. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw. The 19th of April 1962. On Ways of Undertaking Things. Sayadaw based this talk on the Sutta of Majjhima N. Mahadharma Samadana Sutta, Minnesota 46. I have never heard of other monks referred to this Sutta except from Sayadaw. There is also a counterpart sutta in the same Nikaya, Sevatabhasavitabha Sutta, to be cultivated and not to be cultivated, Minnesota 114. 
This discourse is somewhat well known and also taught by others. Minnesota 46 is related to the 10 unwholesome and 10 wholesome dharmas. It describes how the ignorant and wise persons relate to them. The Buddha mentioned four ways of undertaking things by the ignorant and the wise, and then compared them with similes. It seems to me that these two suttas are very important for today's human societies, because there are a lot of problems and sufferings in today's world where there are a lot of internal and external pollutions going on and on. Only Buddha Dharma can help and save human beings from problems, sufferings and destruction which are going on in many kinds of sectors. No other views, philosophies and doctrines can do it. We can even see the entire Buddha Dharma in these two suttas for undertaking and to be cultivated. The first sutta is very basic for human beings to have a happy and peaceful life here and now and for the future to come. Sayadaw's talk was not mentioned in details, which are in the sutta. He only takes some of the points and helps people remember the important points. People want happiness of body and mind, but they don't get it. What is the reason for that? It comes from wrong association. What they need is one thing and what they encounter is another thing. They are consorting with people who should not be consorted. They cultivate and follow things which should not be cultivated and followed. There are four kinds of person related to it. These are Someone who is painful in body and mind, speaks falsehoods and has wrong views. In the Sutta it is mentioned, a person who does things which are painful in the present and for the future to come. In the Sutta mentioned ten unwholesome dharmas. Here Sayadaw spoke only about falsehoods and wrong views. Someone who is pleasant in body and mind, speaks falsehoods and has wrong views. Someone who is painful in body and mind, abstains from falsehoods and holds the right view. Someone who is pleasant in body and mind, abstains from falsehoods and holds the right view. The first person is for his benefit, with painful body and mind, doing unwholesomeness by using falsehood and holding wrong view. In the present, he is in pain and after death, falls into a pious. For example, someone is poor and uses falsehood for his benefit. The second person is, at present, a well-to-do man, not poor, and in the future of samsara, will be in pain. He has property because he is greedy for wealth and uses an unwholesome way to acquire it. The third person is, even though poor at present, in samsara will be happy because he is making merits and practicing dharma. You all have to try hard to become the third and fourth persons. The first person is the most terrible man. The first and second persons are doing and following the wrong ways. The third and fourth persons are following the right way. The first and second persons have wrong associations and are undertaking wrong actions. The third and fourth persons are following the right ways. If no one teaches us, we wouldn't even know which numbers we fall under. According to the Buddha, the four differences are moha, delusion, and panna, wisdom. It means not knowing and knowing about things or the cause of ignorance, avidya, and knowledge, vidya. If it becomes vidya, sila also becomes secure, if practicing vipassana. Sayadaw taught sitanupasana to people. You have to stay with the contemplating knowledge of Anaka, and it'll become the right association. You'll have mind and body happiness in this present life and samsara. Note, in the original Sutta, the Buddha did not mention the background status of the four persons who are undertaking things which are wrong and right. But Mogik Sayadaw mentioned these points, which are whether they are poor or not well-to-do and well-to-do people. Even among rich people, some are power mongers and wealth mongers. Their stupid and foolish actions have great consequences for human societies, environments, and nature. 
We can see all the internal and external problems in today's world. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw. The 20th of April 1962. How to react pain. In the Buddha's time, some monks ask the following question. What are the differences between worldlings and noble beings, Aryas, in relation to pain? When the worldling feels pain in the body, he also feels pain in the mind, Domanasa, as if struck by a spear twice, experiencing both mental and physical pain. He has the desire, Tana, to feel better, leading to the rise of Tana. Unable to find a way to make Tana cease, ignorance, avidya, also arises, resulting in four factors. For noble beings and their disciples, Satava Arya Savaka, if an enemy strikes once with a spear, he returns the strike once, i.e., when feeling arises, they contemplate its anaka. This talk is based on a sutta from the Kandavaga Samyutta. Thus, Loba, Dosa, and Moha all cease, but in the worldling, all arise. Therefore, the DA process cuts off at three places, i.e., at three places, the beginning, the middle, and the end. There are three places where Vedana does not arise, the foot nails, fingernails, tips of the head hair, and dry skins. It can arise in all other places. Follow it with knowledge wherever it arises. Sayadaw mentioned the story of a forest monk eaten by a tiger and how he dealt with Dukkha Vedana. Isn't it still painful if discerning of Anaka? It is not painful. Then Anaka and Maga are fitting in. Vedana and I, me together is another thing. These two are different. Anaka and Maga is the right view. Vedana and me is the wrong view. Vedana and Nana, Nayan, together is the knowledge of discerning the mind, Nama Parakeda Nana. If Anaka and Maga fit together, it is the knowledge of insight or Lakana Nana. No one can abandon bodily pain, but can abandon displeasure, Domanasa, i.e., mental pain. Bodily pain also arose for the Buddha. If you can practice Anaka and Maga fitting together, then practice in the morning and realize Dharma in the evening, from Anguttara Nikaya. Why is that? Because Kalesas do not come in between the practice. This means other mental states come in to disturb the practice. You only discern Anaka sometimes. They come between Anaka and Maga, preventing Maga from arising. But you must also contemplate the Anaka of the incoming Dharma and then go back to the primary objects. If you can't overcome the coming in Dharma, don't go back to the primary objects. They are Kalesa Mara. Whatever arises is Ehi Pasako, come and contemplate me. Whatever arising Dharma that you can contemplate becomes Sanditiko, apparent here and now. Then it becomes Ditta Dharma for you, seeing it by oneself. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw. 22nd to the 23rd of April 1962. On Future Humans and Kamas. Sayadaw told the story in the Kukaravatika Sutta, the dog, duty ascetic, Majima N. Minnesota 57. If people behave and practice like dogs, cows, cats, monkeys, etc., and after death, they will become such animals. If they believe these wrong views and doctrines to be true and right, they will fall into hells. After the Buddha, Sasana disappears, humans will do whatever they desire and crave. Even when the Buddha was still existing in the human world, some humans could engage in these unnatural, abnormal, lowly, practices, in the future, it will become worse. If Samadaya, Tana, Upadana, and Kama, is great, people will experience significant Dukkha. They don't recognize Dukkha Saka and thus prefer Kamas. Kama is Dukkha Saka. Because of ignorance, they love it. 
A vidya covers it up, and they like it. Sayadaw in this talk warns about humans in the future. They will do everything they desire and crave. Even though the Buddha's teachings still exist, in today's world, some humans engage in unnatural and abnormal practices, like nudity in public, and mitya dharma, homosexuality, etc. As human lifespan decreases and morality breaks down, humans can do anything, such as a dharma raga, sexual practices between family members. The Buddha himself mentioned these things in some suttas. Thus, humans should take sexual misconduct very seriously. We should not treat our minds lightly as there will be serious consequences. Exercise restraint and contentment regarding sensual pleasures, or risk becoming animals. Samaditi is the right view, but in some places, suttas, it is also taught as right seeing. Although the four satipatthanas are distinct, in direct practice, it's about the rise and fall or arising and vanishing. With the knowledge of seeing, there is only one thing. If you contemplate form, rupa, do not see it as form but just discern its anaka. Similarly, see vedana as anaka. If you still discern form and vedana, you are only at the stage of discerning form and mind, rupa and nama parakeda nana. These are only the lower levels of right views. If you discern anaka, it develops into samazananana and udayabhanana, knowledges of comprehension and the rise and fall of formations. The teacher should not talk about the insight knowledges or process beforehand and let the yogi himself really develop it. If the yogi develops rise and fall knowledge, the body will become light. This is PT joy, and if it becomes great, he may even have the power to fly into the air. There is no essence in the Kandas, and you'll understand their nature of Anaka, Dukkha, and Anatta. Then, with its disenchantment and truth, Saka will become clear to you. All the five Kandas are Dukkha Saka. Arising is Dukkha and the vanishing is also Dukkha, which you know thoroughly. Therefore, it exists only as a rising dukkha and vanishing dukkha. There is no dukkha greater than this dukkha. You also can't run away from it. See Sayadaw U. Kandima's own experiences in the Noble Search, autobiography. You know about dukkha thoroughly, thus making decisions on it. Sayadaw explained the four meanings of dukkha saka. It has only four functions, kika, with no others. It has the nature of oppression, conditioned by arising and vanishing, burning with the fire of dukkha, seeing it as the nature of change, viparanama, or abandoning its original nature. If the yogi discerns these four points, samadaya dies. During the knowing or seeing of it, samadaya dies, and dukkha ceases, i.e., nirodha. These four truths are apparent to the yogi at the same time. At the time Dukkha becomes apparent, it parallels Magga Saka, and parallels with the death of Samadaya and with Nirodha. Why not see Nibbana? Because it is covered up by Dukkha Saka. Dukkha disappears under knowledge as Nirodha Saka, Nibbana, knowing it as path knowledge. If you practice, it will arise in this way. The Buddha gave the simile of a boat crossing a river. From this side of the river to the other side are two functions, i.e., dukkha right pointing arrow near Oda. Crossing the river and the boat, carrying the loads are two functions, Tana river and Maga boat. Therefore, it has four functions. The boat performs four jobs, and in the same way, ultimately path knowledge, Maga nana, will perform the four jobs, boat equals maga. Inside knowledge abandons the kanda and tana. Path knowledge abandons kanda and tana while seeing nibbana, and does so at that time with eight path factors. Senya, the dog duty ascetic, abandoned his wrong view and became a noble one, arahant. 
The path knowledge or path factors can cut off Micha Ditti Kama, actions with wrong view, representing the Dharma of cutting Kama. Sayadaw continued to explain about the qualities of a stream enter, Sotapana. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw. The 22nd of April 1962. Dangers of craving for taste. Food for thought on Dana. Yuong Zan Wai, a retired politician and his group came to Mogik with Sayadaw and practiced meditation. They offered food to the monks and all the yogis there. He requested Sayadaw for an Anumodana talk. Sayadaw reminded all of them how to make Dana properly and how to consume food. He said all should make merits to end Dukkha, Nibbana, and not for sugar teas and wealth in the future to come. All these worldly pleasures are Dukkha, even as we can see a lot of sufferings as human beings. Celestial and Brahma beings also have Dukkha. See Subrahma Devata's story. Sayadaw reminded and taught people how to consume food. He said the monks have to reflect on the four requisites before using them. Lay people should also do it. If they don't know how to do it, at least they should spread metta and health for the donor's benefits. Consuming in this way does not fall into debts to the donors. If consuming with greed, dissatisfaction, and discontentment, criticism of the danus, or without sati in the process, in the future to come they have to repay the debts with candors. Another way is during the consuming process of using sati to observe the mind consciousness on the flavors and discern its nature. This is the consuming of food with the Four Noble Truths. This way is explained in Samyutta. If I ask you, where does food come from? It comes from volition, satana. So its origin is ultimate truth, paramatta dharma. Satana is in the mind and it wants to end dukkha. This satana is with the knowledge of seeing dukkha that it doesn't want the pseudo happiness, fake and crook happiness. Sayadaw mentioned the dukkha of any existences, man, deva, and brahma. So your satana is arising with knowledge together. This is the real vivata dana, giving without clinging to the cycle of existence. If this knowledge arises, kalesa can't arise. So it also frees from kalesa vata, the round of defilement. There is also no action of merit and demerit, so it also frees from kama vata, the round of action. It's freeing from kalesa and kama vatas so that the arising of kanda vata, the round of kanda does not arise. If you're looking for new kanda, you're looking for dukkha, new dukkha. With the existing dukkha and looking again for dukkha is extremely stupid and foolish. This is doing the foolish thing during the giving and offering things. Today the dana is dana to nibbana. The one who gives has the intention of nibbana and Sayadaw also is doing the anumodana for nibbana. Sayadaw taught how to consume the foods during the time of eating. Do not eat with loba, dosa, and moha, but eat it with sending of metta. If you are just eating and going back home, you will pay your debts with the kandas. With metta and contemplation, you have no debts for it. Sayadaw explained reflection on foods by monks. Don't take it as if it's only taught for the monks. It is related to everyone. It includes metta and panna, and you are not in debt for the eating. If you eat with criticism, you are at fault with it. Another method is eating with insight contemplation. With the contact of food and tongue, jiva vinana, tongue consciousness, knowing of taste, arises. It arises from causes, here, two causes, and after the arising, it vanishes. If you eat with anaka and do not fall into debts, it is because you do not acquire the kanda. Therefore, whatever you are eating, send metta or eat with knowledge. This is eating with the Four Noble Truths.
These two ways of consuming food come from the Samyutta Pali. You all have to eat food to be freed from slavery and with the goal to arrive at Nibbana. Here I want to make some reflections on the craving for taste and flavor of foods and drinks. It can also be a great subject matter in today's modern world. Dr. Nandamalavivamsa Sayador gave a very good talk on this matter. There are five sensual pleasures that come from the contacts of sense doors and sense objects, eye and sight, ear and sound, etc. Of the five pleasures, according to the Buddha, craving for taste and flavor is the worst one. Our modern situations and problems also support this point. Some people may not crave seeing, hearing, etc. Or these things may not be necessary for human survival. For example, modern men have strong cravings for seeing and hearing by using smartphones and other gadgets, which are also not necessary for human survival. Even when human beings do not use them rightly, properly, and wisely, they cause a lot of harm, most importantly their minds are becoming more and more defiled. For most kinds of living beings, eating foods and drinks is important for survival. So, living beings need to eat food, and no one can escape from the pleasure of taste and flavor. The last sensual pleasure is related to mind and mind objects. This factor may not be very clear to most people, only to some Buddhists. People with wrong views, wrong faiths, wrong doctrines, and theories and wrong thoughts, proliferation, and fantasies that could affect a lot of humans, societies, and countries. For example, with the help of science and technology we create a lot of weapons of mass destruction such as atomic bombs, e.g., on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, supersonic missiles, etc. Unsustainable economic policy and politics by some politicians and economists, because of their craving for power and wealth, create a lot of problems, chaos, and suffering in societies and natural environments. These people are intelligent fools misusing their knowledge. In the Saka Samyutta, the Buddha's first discourse, setting in motion the wheel of the Dharma, the Buddha spoke about craving, Tanna as follows, the noble truth of the origin of suffering is this craving, which leads to renewed existence, accompanied by delight and lust, seeking delight here and there, that is, craving for sensual pleasures, etc. So, Tanna leads to renewed existence, Bhava, which is Dukkha Saka. With Tanna for sensual pleasures, humans can engage in any unwholesome and evil actions. For example, the craving for land has led to disputed and conflicted with each other. It becomes increasingly violent and extreme, causing great suffering. The earth does not belong to anyone. It only belongs to nature. Thus, everyone on this earth should live with each other in harmony and peace. If not, everyone becomes a thief because even our mind and body do not belong to us let alone all external things. So the mind is the creator with its craving, and clinging creates all problems and sufferings. Therefore, without Dharma knowledge, everyone is ignorant and deluded. Dharma education and training is the most important aspect for every human. In this modern world, human beings create a lot of problems, suffering, and destruction through the indulgence of sensual pleasure related to taste and flavor. We poison the food chains with pesticides and chemicals, deforestation for meat production and other actions lead to climate change and many natural disasters. For food production, all kinds of food and drinks, using a lot of packaging, especially plastics, creates significant waste problems. All these outcomes pollute the earth and lead to climate change. All these create health problems and ill-being. If we don't burn and destroy all this waste and instead pile it up every day, it will cover everything on the earth. The downfall of human beings started from a craving for taste and flavor. See, Agana Sutta, DN. 27.
In Buddhist texts, five kinds of people are mentioned with regard to craving for foods or taste. One person eats so much that he can't get up by himself. Another eats until his lower robe falls off. Another cannot get up and lies down there to sleep. One overeats to the point that he vomits the food. Even someone can die from overeating. Among the forty kinds of meditation objects, loathsomeness of food is taught by the Buddha. Thus, letting go of the craving for taste is very important. By finding disgust in the loathsomeness of food, it is easier to let go of it. There is nothing fragrant and beautiful coming out of the body from eating, it's only smelly and disgusting. These things include, mucus, sweat, saliva, fat, bile, oil. In nine streams, filth is always flowing from it, including eye secretions, ear secretions, and mucus. From the mouth, it emits phlegm and bile, body sweat, excrement, and urine. Time and energy for food is not a small thing and involves a lot of dukkha. Food and drinks provide only a momentary pleasure when they go into the mouth, but we use a lot of time and energy to get these tastes. After eating, cleaning up, and dealing with the excretion and urination, it can also be very tiring. There are more food stalls, restaurants, food shops, and hotels than other kinds of businesses. There is a lot of competition at international levels for tastes. The most silly thing is eating competitions in American, e.g., who can eat more chilies and quicker than anyone. In Burma, a man hit his wife on the head with firewood because she forgot to prepare a chili dish for which he had a strong craving and killed his wife on the spot at the dining place. For taste, people can even kill or fight each other, e.g., trade wars. In the time of the Buddha, a monk named Tissa, who practiced the Dutanga, ascetic practice, of eating only arms round foods and was serious about it. Later, at his mother's arrangement, she sent a courtesan to seduce her son with foods which he craved at home. Because of his craving for taste, he returned to lay life. It was like a fish craving for the bait and ending up with death. For Tissa, it was more painful than death because his holy life came to an end, continuing his wandering in samsara. The Buddha mentioned his past life craving for taste that was exploited by the gardener. At that time, he was a deer, and the prostitute, courtesan, was the gardener who seduced the deer with honey grass. The king, who wanted to see the deer, was the bodhisattva. In this Jataka story, we can see the Kamaj result of any actions as Kamavipaka or Sinta. The result of action is inconceivable. Any attachment that becomes a habit is very difficult to give up, similar to the self view, and leads to sufferings. If modern men can control and be content with the craving for taste for foods and drinks, it could solve many human problems and sufferings in the world, such as health problems, pollution, competition syndrome, etc. There are many things that can be contemplated regarding the craving for taste. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw. 26th to the 27th of April 1962. Extinguish your hell fire. In the beginning, the explanation was about the five khandas. Five khandas arise by Tana Chanda, craving and desire. Someone who clings to the khandas becomes identified with clinging khandas, upadana khandas, while without clinging, they are merely khandas. There are many kinds of khanda according to the desire of beings, and they are not created by anyone, for example, human khandas, deva khandas, etc. Material form, rupa, arises from the four great elements, mind, nama, from contact, fasa, and consciousness, vinana, from mind and form, nama rupa. How do we prevent craving, conceit, and wrong view from arising? You have to contemplate the five khandas as follows. This is not mine, this I am not, 
this is not myself. Then, all of them become non-self, as I am explaining from the text. In real contemplation, you contemplate only one of the four satipatthanas. The Buddha asks us to contemplate in this way. One monk thought, if all the five khandhas are unreliable, what can I rely on? Lacking wisdom, covered in ignorance, and having strong craving, he looked for something reliable. Thus, he chose to rely on kama, making it, mine, which became a wrong view. Believing kama is not perishing, that kama becomes self, atta. Every Buddhist who had not encountered a good teacher previously relied on kama, believing it does not perish. This is Kamavadi Sasatadirthi, a belief that holds a permanent wrong view on Kama. Kama is like father and mother, and beings have to suffer according to its arrangement. If it decides you should live, you live. If it decides you should die, you die. This is akin to the faith in God, where he determines everything for you. Both are considered wrong views. The Buddha teaches Dharma in two ways, making it easy to see and understand. He taught with similes, analogies, etc. E.g., Kama follows behind like a shadow. These are conceptual Dharmas. The other way is directly through Sunata Dharmas, emptiness of Dharma or Paramatta Dharmas. Believing in Kama and its results cannot dispel Diti, self-view, as discussed in these Pali textbooks. Then, do the kamas that have been done become defunct? This is easy to answer. During the performance of kama, mind and form exist. At death, also new mind and form arise. The mind and form of this life do not follow into the next life. Until after the attainment of Nibbana, all the kamas will continue to yield results. Believing that the mind and form here follow to there is sasata ditti. If you take it that the mind and form here do not follow there, that also is akeda ditti. The same kind of mind and form that arise there is called giving the result, syad or drive. Nanda Malavivamsa gives the example of the internet being online. The Buddha continued the talk with Q and A to dispel ditti and all the monks became arahants. In the beginning, Sayadaw talked about how to tune or adjust the five spiritual faculties. Kanda stays with its own nature, but we go and mix the self into it. For example, the seeing consciousness sees it, the object, and we interpret it as, I see it. Seeing consciousness is Sakaya, an existing phenomenon in nature, and, I see it, becomes Sakaya Diti, wrong view of identity of self, which is a non-existing phenomenon. Contemplating with the identity of self view prevents one from attaining Nibbana. Speaking in this way is all right for communication with concepts, but when you contemplate, don't mix it up. Another example is when hearing, the hearing consciousness hears it, the sound, and not, I hear it, I, me, he, she, etc. do not really exist. It doesn't matter when you're talking with others, but don't take it as real. Taking it as real leads to a pia jati, births in bad existence. Mind dharma is the foreman and form dharma is the worker. In there, no iness is included. Only mind and form exist. A person, a being, does not truly exist there. This is achieved with the help of a teacher dispelling wrong view with the knowing consciousness. It is better to let it fall away with contemplation. For example, consciousness arises. It doesn't exist merely by observing. After arising and vanishing, there is no I-ness. A guest arises and a guest dies. There is nothing to do with the I-ness. Sayadaw continued to discuss how to practice Sitanupasana. It frees from doubt by allowing doubt to fall away through contemplation, because one discerns anicca independently. When free from doubt, it cuts off the DA process. 
He continued to discuss the inside process. The disappearance of arising dukkha and vanishing dukkha is Nibbana. What are the benefits of knowing the cessation of dukkha? All the unwholesome actions from past lives and the present life become defunct because the path knowledge cuts them off so that they can't give results, i.e., a pyre dukkha for the future. Therefore, do you want to repay your demerit with the candors or with path knowledge? This is a very important question for everyone. If there is a disease, there is medicine. Everyone has demerits, akasala dharmas. Do you want to offset them with kama or nana? However, your knowledge should not be too late. If you die earlier, it becomes too late. The unwholesome actions you have done are fueling the hell fire even before you die. Sayadaw gave the example of Upasaka Nandiya's merits, which results were already appearing in the Deva realm while he was still alive. Before his death, celestial mansions were appearing there, Mahamogalana himself saw them there. In the same way, because of the demerits of beings, the hell realms are arising there. Not by God. Therefore, you can extinguish the hell fire and keep away the hell cauldrons from here. At least, extinguish the hell fire first and attend to your business later. This was the last time in his life teaching at Mogik. So, he encouraged them to practice seriously with a lot of compassion for them. If you don't believe these things, at near death you'll know about them. He mentioned the dying experiences. Don't be in the mind state of, I'll correct it later. You all have to prepare for it now. In this way, you really have sympathy for yourself. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw The 30th of April and the 1st of May 1962 Humans love for Kanda and Tana. A person who contemplates to discern Anaka is wise, whereas someone who doesn't even know what exists in the Kanda is a fool. These talks are interesting as they show how Sayadaw handles family affairs with Dharma. It appears that some couples mentioned their children's problems to him. He advised them not to be overly concerned, but to simply fulfill the parents' duties. You're doing merits and also go to Apayas. Looking after the children is a kind of merit. This point is important for Buddhists, and many people overlook the benefits of it. In a family, the wife or mother often has more merits than others. Her many duties give her opportunities to make merits. Nowadays, modern women are increasingly staying away from these opportunities more than ever before. Many of them neglect the duty to educate and train their children in wholesome directions. If you are displeased with them, it becomes demerits, akasala. With affection comes sorrow, lamentation, pain, and grief, Sayadaw told the story of a Brahmin whose only son died, causing sorrow and lamentation. The female boss Visakha is a very good example. Even a Sotapanna experiences it. Therefore, Tana oppresses you. Still human beings have great love for Tana, even some Buddhists, with coming and going, plead with Tana, beat me. Beat me. Closing parenthesis dot. According to the DA process, Tana, Upadana, Soka, Parideva, etc. You must detach your affection from it, but not from the children's candors. You have to contemplate your own candors. What do they have except the arising and vanishing? Is it the practice of the holy life, Brahma Kariya, that causes sorrow and lamentation? Whatever dukkha you experience comes from Samadaya Saka, Loba. Loba is an unwholesome Dharma. One's kanda is anatta, not belonging to oneself. The children's kandas also are anatta, not belonging to them. It's only craziness to quarrel with each other with no ownership. You're the first one in foolishness by clinging to the kanda. With anger, it's like throwing excrement that soils you first. Besides the practice of the holy life, 
there are no other reliable things. In everyday life, thorough investigation of children and business matters is not useful. It's only for a lifetime. You are not able to investigate for many lives to come. Not connecting for many lives of suffering that the Buddha taught about the right way of thorough investigation, from Nidana Samyutta. Aging, sickness, and death exist in the Kanda. You must investigate them with knowledge. You must always investigate what exists in the Kanda. In the body, there are phenomena that cause aging and lead to death. For example, the heat element, Tejo Datu. If it's warm, it makes you old. If cold, it can cause death. Smiling about children and business matters is the smile of not wanting to see the king of death. It's smiling in front of the death messenger. Even if the killer's knife is on your neck and you're still smiling, it indicates madness. Therefore, now is still not the time for smiling. You're living with the heat element, which is leading you towards death. Where do all these things come from? Because the candor exists. It is the one that accepts aging, sickness, and death. It was like looking for the base of a tendril. We have to find the cause of it. What you're smiling at now is just looking at the tip of the result. The process in reverse order is, candor left pointing arrow influenced by tana, affection for the candor, left pointing arrow tana left pointing arrow affection for property, one's candor, and other candors, etc. Upasakas and upasikas often say they have a nature of affections, i.e., a friendly nature. They lack the knowledge of dharma and make all these mistakes, and they don't even realize that they are seeking their own dukkhas. All affectionate things are the main cause of the king of death. You must contemplate them with insight. The Buddha said, humans are quite similar to vultures. A vulture likes the putrid body of a dead dog, carcass. They fight each other for the putrid carcass, similar to corrupt politicians and some leaders vying for power and wealth in today's world. Humans also fight and vandalize for the affectionate things, of which there are many. When we're looking for the greatest thing, it is our own candors. Every being loves oneself more than others. There is no other way to free oneself from aging and death, except to contemplate one's candor with insight.